uh, let me start uh, recognizing some of the illustrious Colombians that are here with us this evening. I start with Sergio Fajardo and his wife, governor of Antioquia, a good friend and possibly one of the most important leaders of the near future, uh, of the present, of course, but of the near future in Colombia. It's very good to see you here. Former Minister of Education, Maria Fernanda Campo, good to see you again in the, uh, on the other side of the education as a student. How, how does it feel? I wonder. <laughs> Um, I also found in this room Maria Cristina Caballero. When I saw this lady, I thought I had traveled back in time because um, Maria Cristina and I, we have worked for peace in Colombia for so many years that I think this uh, gathering has a good sign for the future. I'm very glad to see you again. Uh, Ricardo Santamaria, my fellow partner, uh, Parse, in the peace process in Havana. We feel kind of survivors. Thank you for being here. Monica Pinzon, our Consul General. The organizers, uh, Julian Urrutia must be there in the cabin. Pedro, thanks again. I'm very pleased and very honored to be in Harvard joining this conference on Colombia organized by this university plus MIT and the Boston University, something that happens unfrequently um, that you write down in your CV. So it's a great honor for me. So um, I have to confess that more than the official version of the current situation in Colombia or the peace process, uh, what I'm going to say to you is my testimony on what I have seen in the last years from the private sector first and now in the public sector. And that is a success story named Colombia. A success story that begins turn of the century. When I come back with my mind to 95, and I remember what kind of Colombia we had there, what kind of isolation since the geopolitical point of view, what kind of extra stagnation since the economic point of view, what kind of unrest since the social point of view, what kind of uh, failure in delivering social policy successfully to people. And then I compare what we have today. I think it's uh, one of the most notorious successes in the developing world. It doesn't mean that we have built in 15 or 20 years a perfect country, far from that. But we have been able to impeach the failure of a democracy in Colombia, and we have been able to come back to, where, to the stage where we should have been for many years, maybe for a century. It's a stage of respect, a stage of recognition of our problems, a stage of consultation of what kind of public policy we have to design and to deliver, and what is our responsibility with social issues and with the region. At the turn of the century, Colombia was the economy number seven in Latin, in Latin America by size. As we speak, we have a very fraternal controversy with Argentina, who's number three. Our GDP has moved from less than $100 billion in 2000 to $420 billion uh, uh, in 2014. It means that the income of Colombians has moved from $2,000 to $9,000 in 15 years. And if you put that in capacity of purchase of those $9,000, maybe you can move to $12,000. That's 
a middle high income in world terms. So it has produced income households that had never been able to reach services, goods, and even entertainment or education or health in the past generations. Around 12 million Colombians have moved in this century from poverty to the middle classes. What's the first thing you do when you move from poverty to middle classes? Is to try to remain there. You won't let the system take you back to poverty. So you want to see quality in education for your kids. You want to see a better plan in health. You want to see roads because many Colombians have a car or a motorcycle for the first time. Our car market was, 15 years ago, 50,000 units. Last year we closed in 350,000 units. Those are people that are having a car for the first time in their lives, in, the, in their family's history. They want to use it. They want to see better roads to use it. They want to, get, to take their kids on the weekend out of Bogotá or Medellín or Cali. We have moved from 6 million air passengers in 2006 to 30 million passengers this year by air. If all the rich people in Colombia took the plane, we would never make 30 million air passengers. Someone else has to be buying tickets. Someone that has reached a level of income to go and see his aunt in Barranquilla, do business in Cali, or just have a weekend of vacation in Barranquilla or Cartagena. So that's another economy, something different of what we had. Poverty was 60% of our population in, when we had the last peace process, 98. I remember how difficult it was in the, the so-called European tour, El Euro tour, the, of the peace process in 98, to explain that Colombia had six out of every 10 of its in, inhabitants under the line of poverty. That figure is now 2.7 out of every 10, 27%. And the trend is that by the end of this decade, we will be in around 19% of people under the line of poverty. That's far beyond the, far below the average of the region. So that's another country, a new Colombia. When they asked me in DC, what's the, sentence in which you could describe what Colombia has done the best in these 20, 15 years. I answer saying we defeated organized crime. That's point number one. It's not very common in the world to see countries that can say that with authority, with numbers, with facts. But that's what happened in Colombia. In 95, we had infiltration of the cartels, in government, in justice, in the media, in the private sector. We were very close to become a failed state. Today, we still have organized crime, but it's not a threat for the existence of the government or the state anymore, as it was 12, 20 years ago. We defeated organized crime in drugs, in illicit crops, in money laundering, in infiltration to the police or the army, in infiltration to justice. That's a defeat that needs another debate, a more global one on drugs, because what we achieve in Colombia just moves somewhere else. But that's another conference, that's another speech. We have really done well fighting organized crime. Imagine that Colombia had, at the turn of the century, 200,000 hectares of coca. We have now less than 40,000 hectares of coca. 
FARC used to have 32 combatants at the beginning of the century. They have 6,000 combatants. And all the violence that that mass could bring to the uh, Colombian society has been going down and down year after year. Our security indicators are better, even we are still a violent society. We are in the averages of homicide, for instance, but still too many homicides. And uh, we have improved in 95% of our territory in questions of security, but still we need to improve in what is left. So Colombia is not a perfect country, but we have done the miracle, I would say, of impeaching our state to collapse and bringing it back from the brink to normality, to leadership in Latin America. What's, what's, uh, what's left? If, let's assume for the discussion that Colombia has decided to become a developed country, that we can really face our future with pride, that from that isolated country of 2000, we can move to become a member of the OECD. That's a parable of Colombia. What's left? What do we need to do? Well, reforms. We still have many things to reform. I would say that reforms has been the word key for the last 15, 18 years. We have had good governments that have reformed, from the police to the oil company, to telecom from telecommunications to electricity, from the regions to royalties, from uh, the lowest level of justice to the functioning of education, from competition in the private sector to trade and investment. But we still have one big reform pending that's the highest levels of justice. That's a reform that is being discussed in government, in Congress, and will be delivered, we hope, this year. What else? Inequality. That's a fight we have to win you want, if we want to be a developed country. Finally, our Gini indicator has been moving in the right direction in the last five years. We used to have a Gini of 0.6, and that was really a tragedy. We have now cities of, with a Gini indicator of 0 0.38, 0 0.4, like Bogotá or Medellín. We have regions uh, like the Coffee Belt with the Gini of 0 0.51. We are in the right track. So now, the problem is not inequality only between persons, but between regions. When you say that the average income in Colombia is $9,000, Bogotá is 14,000 per inhabitant, but Chocó is 4,000. There's a gap we have to attack, and with all the tools needed and uh, available in a state, public expenditure, private investment, connectivity, infrastructure, education in the first place. One of the three uh, big pillars of these next uh, three years of second administration of Santos is education, the quality of education. And the minister, former minister of education knows a decision that was very hard. Politicians love long lists of countries. If you have a list of 180 countries for com comparing your education and you're in a spot number 80, that's good news, you're in the middle. But when you compare to the best, and the list is OECD, 34 countries, and you're 34, there you have a challenge to change and improve your, uh, your public policy in education. And that's what we have decided to do, to improve the quality of our education and to become the most educated country by 2025. That's a big challenge. What, el what else is left? We have to build infrastructure. Our country is an unconnected country, an unexisting united market. It's very difficult to go from Bogotá to Medellín, 
from Barranquilla to Cali, from the frontier of Venezuela to the frontier of, with Ecuador. It's still an adventure. We are building the best infrastructure we can with the resources we can. That's going to change the shape of Colombia. That's a huge investment, $26 billion in infrastructure for roads for the next five years. It's going to change the connection between people, between producers and consumers, between cultural lives of the regions, between the coasts and the internal Colombia that have, have always been so far away. What else have we the responsibility to do to end the conflict? We still have a conflict in Colombia, a conflict that produces death, pain, Tears, poverty, that lags behind us and doesn't let Colombia produce all the potential we have in our people. How do you end that? You can keep the way of the military fighting of the conflict. That could take 10 more years. Yeah, some people would like to see that. Some others, I include myself in that second list, would like to see the end sooner than that. I was born in 1957. I've never seen one day of peace in my country. Well, I would like to die in a country in peace. Who knows if, if in 10 years I'm still here. And the conditions to end that conflict have appeared one after the other to take the right decision of negotiating the end of the conflict. One, it has changed. We are a better country than the one we had 20 years ago. No doubt about that. There is still a lot to change and to work for, but Colombia is a better country today than 20 years ago. Second, we have a better position internationally because the world has changed. And we have changed room for terror or for unarmed struggles is very, very small in today's world. And third, we have a state that has the means and the resources to work for the national agenda. Imagine that in 2000 our national budget was $25 billion to do everything, roads and education, security and exploration in oil. This year's $120 billion, that's another state. So you can think in a post-conflict, really delivering, implementing agreements, not only with promises that things are going to be built or changed. It is possible to rebuild that Colombia of 5 million people and 300 square kilometers that is in the 19th century. That Colombia that has suffered the conflict for 50 years. We can bring it to the first 21st century and modernize a country that is the size of Central America, 300,000 square kilometers and 5 million people. That responsibility is going to take one generation, it's, going to, it's not going to be possible in five years. It has to take 10 or 15 years or 20 of hard work. But it can be done. We have to look at that Colombia, forgotten Colombia for 200 years, as if a tsunami would have been through those 300,000 square kilometers and change the reality for people there with the roads they need, with the education they are asking for, with the coverage in health they don't have, with the technological packages they lack, with the irrigation they never received, with the connectivity to internet that technology allow uh, countries to have. It is possible. But the negotiation was a need because those factors were aligned. We have a better international position, we are a better country, and we have a state that can do things. So the negotiation, the decision to negotiate taken by President Santos is the right one. If you see as a president of a country 
that you can bring the end of a, of a conflict to your times. And by that way you can save one death, or two, or twenty, or two thousand. It's your moral obligation to take the decision to negotiate. And that's what is happening in, in, in Havana. Maybe it's too long. Maybe it has taken more time than we wanted. Maybe the results are not appearing as fast as we, dream, as we dreamed when we started but it is something that we have to persevere and persevere until we reach an agreement. The easy position, yes, to just stand up from the table and run away every time that a tragedy like last week's uh, happens. That's the easy way. Everybody would be saying, yes, that's what you had to do, Mr. President. And three years later saying, let's try again the negotiation. The hard part is to maintain the decision of negotiating the end of the conflict. This event of last week, I think, will have the benefit of accelerating the, negoci the negotiation, of bringing more results from the table to the public opinion. Because there is no doubt, my dear friends, that this Colombian society has been offended by far hurt because Colombians thought that the unilateral decision of a ceasefire was serious. They feel like the FARC really felt out of their word. And it takes all the confidence out of FARC. They need to react with results in the negotiations. It's the only way to keep the negotiation. Let's assume that time for negotiating and patience are two amounts of energy equal. We have the same time than patience. We have very little of both. Very little of both. The support of the international community gives additional fuel to the negotiation, but it's not infinite either. So I think that the decision of maintaining the negotiation, accelerating the results of the negotiation, pushing far to really tell the Colombian people that they are seriously sitting at the table to reach the end of the conflict, has reached the right opportunity. That is now. That is now. Colombia is in a position of really jumping to a new stage of history, a new stage of development. We can do that, building peace. We have to persevere in that path. What we have achieved is good, but we can have more. We can have more. A negotiation is a solution. Since my point of view as member of that commission, we will persevere. Even if the room in the Colombian uh, sensitivity is small. And let me finish with this. Once we sign, the hard part starts. Implementation. Let's put some humor to this conversation. Implement, the verb to implement. Chomsky is not here, he would give us some ideas. To implement is a new verb in Spanish. The verb to implement, implementar, was accepted by the Academy in Madrid only two years ago. We don't know how to conjugate that verb. It's new. Implementation is going to be the challenge for peace in Colombia. Once we sign, we have to be sure that six months later, 12 months later, 18 months later, those five million Colombians feel better than the day before of the signature of peace. That's the challenge, to build the feeling of being member of a new country, of a new column. Um, and uh, I think also there is one condition once we sign. Peace is not going to come from the papers with the ELN. It's going to come from the Colombian hearts. Pardon, 
reconciliation. Words that with this exercise of the victims in Havana, we rediscovered those concepts in our society. Those are the real words that will move peace forward. Reconciliation and pardon. And the decisions Santos is going to have to take, drawing the line between reconciliation, peace, and justice, those decisions so hard that come in the next weeks, hopefully, will leave many people unsatisfied. And that would be a very good sign. If many people are unsatisfied for op opposite reasons, we are taking the right decisions. Some because there's too much justice. Some because there's too few justice. Some because there's too long the terms of uh, implementation. Some because there's too short the effort. That's the key to really commit the country in the post-conflict. That is possible. So my report to this conference on Colombia is against all odds of optimism. We take this process out successfully. But we need to ha be more united. We need to really deal with the peace process in a more united manner. With this events of last week's, FARC has not faced Santos, not even the military. They faced Colombia. If you take a look at the social networks, with no exception, the word is offense. We have to rebuild that. Confidence in the peace process should come from only one source. FARC. FARC with results in the negotiations. So I think we, will, we can do it and we will do it. I'm very proud to see in the United States the change of the perception of Colombia, the change of the perception on our government. It was very hard, the task of my predecessors in Washington. Now I represent a country that more than a problem is a source of solutions. We are very often compared and asked, how did you do this or this on poverty, microeconomics, mac 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 macroeconomics, or in uh, industry or whatever. It's a new phase for Colombia. But we need the cherry in the cake, that there is peace, a negotiated fast peace. Thank you very much. I'm open to questions and to your comments. Thank you very much.